Hi, I am Tom Flaherty. I'm the pastor at City Church, and this is my testimony. I was raised in Milton, Wisconsin, a little town about 30 miles south of Madison, in a large Catholic family, um, six children, and we were faithful Catholics. We went every week, but there was a there was a real divide between church and life. In fact, if if people call, talked about Jesus when they weren't at church, we referred to people like that as Jesus freaks. We're, I, it, Jesus was okay, but he needed to be at church. And so in high school, there was a group uh, called Campus Life that they were Jesus freaks. <laughs> they, they were very unashamedly about Jesus, and um, I liked a few of the girls in there, and so they invited me to a retreat, and I went to the retreat, and. Um, they tried to tell me the gospel, and I just said, no, it's, that can't be true. It's too exclusive. There's too many religions for that one to be true. And so I went to college, and once again, there was somebody on my dorm floor um, that was part of the Baptist Student Union, and this was another one of those Jesus freaks. And he would talk to me about Jesus, I remember talking to him in the bathroom, and he would talk anywhere about Jesus. And I, I liked an argument. I kind of liked to hear myself talk. Uh, so I went down to their Bible study, and frankly, I felt like I won every argument about it. I felt like I was right, and they were wrong. But there was something about these guys. There was a peace about them. There was something, um, their willingness to listen to me and love on me was, was very powerful. Well, one weekend I went back to Whitewater, which is where all of my friends had gone to college, and uh, we were very drunk, and I had something fall on me very hard. It was like a, a wood beam fell on me, and um, none of my friends cared. <laughs> and I went out into this, um, stairwell and I was crying and it wasn't because of the pain of the wood falling on me it was I just really felt like this was the level of my friends and that I was very very much alone so the next day I came back to Madison I'm in my dorm room alone I am literally contemplating the meaning of my life why do I exist why am I even at Madison why am I majoring in business and there's a knock at the door and it's this guy from the Baptist Student Union, and he says, can we talk? And I, I said, sure, why not? We went down to his room, and he took me through this little booklet called The Four Spiritual Laws. Um, the first one was that God loves us and he has a plan for our life. The second one was that we've all sinned and we fall short of God on our own. And the third one was that, that Jesus died for us on the cross. And I grew up in church. I believed all three of those, but there was a fourth law that I had never seen before. And that was that Jesus was knocking on the door of our heart and that we needed to make a response. We actually needed to ask him in. And at the end of this diagram were two circles and one circle had um, dots all messed up and that stood for goals and purposes of your life and it had an S in the middle which stood for self kind of on the throne and the cross was on the outside standing for Jesus outside of the life and the other one had uh, the cross on the throne of the life with a small S next to it and standing for Christ at the center and self being submissive to him and all the dots were all lined up and he said to me which one of these two circles is your life? Now, it's funny, because if he had said, are you, are you a Christian? I would have said yes. If he had said, do you think you're going to go to heaven? I would have said yes, because I felt like I was a very good person. But he said, which of these two circles is your life? And I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that self was right in the middle of my life, and I knew that my goals and purposes were all messed up. I, I had been contemplating that very thing. 
And so I pointed to that one and he said, which one do you want it to be? And that was the, the moment of truth. If Jesus is real, if God is real, then he certainly deserves the center. And so I pointed to that one. And he said, well, the way you get here is through prayer and opening your heart and allowing Jesus to come in to be both Lord and Savior of your life. Do you want to do that right now? I said, yeah. And so I prayed to accept Christ. It's my, uh, the end of my freshman year of college. And that's now uh, about 38 years ago. And I can just say this, it's the greatest thing that ever happened. I'm a pastor now, but my identity is not pastor. I'm a beloved child of God. Pastor is just my assignment. And uh, so I recommend it. I recommend Jesus to everyone. He's the greatest thing uh, that's ever happened to me. So God bless you. <laughs>